What's up, guys? We're back. Part two. Snyder Cut, Reaction and Commentary. Lucas and Zach here. Um, this movie's really long. Um, I think we're definitely feeling uh, being two hours in and not being halfway done. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm wide awake, baby. <laughs> I'm wide awake. Bow, 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 I feel like the bow, only way bow. Zach will stay oh, wide awake for the next uh, two hours of this movie is if he sings constantly. <laughs> I know you haven't taken a restroom break to give me a chance to do my Batman songs I prepared. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll give it to you in the second half. Um, yeah, we're going to start up again. Um, we did the first two chapters. We're starting with chapter four. We are at chapter four, part four, which is Change Machine, one hour, 51 minutes, 39 seconds into the movie, if you'd like to sync yourself up with us. And we're going to get started in three, two, one, go. We got little Commissioner Gordon looking up in the sky. This this part in the original movie is like thirty minutes into the film or something. Yeah, so they've they've really heavily accelerated uh, pushed this back. Isn't this a big part of the um, promotion for this? Was that shot or doesn't he like smash the light at some point? I don't know. I think you're thinking of uh, Dark Knight. Dark Knight Rises. Okay, but I thought that was in the promotion too. But yeah, it might have been. I thought him on the roof, Gordon on the roof was. Hmm. I'm sure they did shots of it. I do want some backstories on all their costumes. I like, did. I don't know, like Bruce Wayne could pay for shit. We did like the Flash make his own outfit. Yeah, that's it. They're just all great clothes designers. Not to constantly compare this to Marvel, but there is something nice about the Avengers. Where um, you kind of get, you've had all the characters introduced on their own first. Where here we've only really seen like Wonder Woman on her own and a little bit of Batman. Our, our subtitle adventure, subtitle adventure was a failure. I have no subtitles. Disaster. Yeah. I just turned that on. Well, I don't think that worked for me. Mm, it didn't work. Okay. No, oh, well, thank goodness. I can read lips so well. That's not, I true. think to be honest, this is, this might be a problem with the fact that this is just on the site today. And my guess would be they would be more focused on getting the actual thing I think thing they up. would be prepared. I think things get released with subtitles. It's not a thing to not do at this point. No, I'm not saying. I'm not, I'm not saying. I'm not saying it, it, they didn't have them prepared. I'm saying it may be more buggy than the actual movie because they were probably more focused on making sure you could watch the four-hour Snyder cut. This is a little bit goofy that they have just like a bunch of badges lying in a pile that kind of tells you exactly who's here. <laughs> that they had a like the opposite of taking your name tag at the table when you enter a conference, they just had to throw their badge in the middle of this tunnel floor. See, the music is, you know, super bro-y, super intense right now, and just inconsistent with anything we heard the first half. Well, again, I think this music works with the movie. I don't necessarily think the stuff the first half worked with the movie. Oh, sure, it works. Is it good music? No, I don't need to listen to I'm it. not saying it does, but I think it, it fits with the classic team-up action movie that you, what you're looking for. I think that's the stuff you bring Junkie, Junkie XO in to do. Yes, it does feel like the, the you know, it feels like in his vein. And when you name yourself Junkie XL, you basically know what you're selling. Uh, Get more spider.
But does the spider make him feel bad? Like, is it some real brain torture? I mean, I assume that jamming whatever the thing in your head to get stuff to pop out would not be comfortable. Yeah. Isn't it crazy? Oh, man, though, did like, I didn't even realize Superman has not been I know, in this it's, it's crazy, right? He has not been in this movie. <laughs> We're already like a little more than one average movie length in. Well, because we, we start at the beginning with like Superman died, and then now we're at Oh, I forgot almost forgot Superman was in the movie. Forget Steppenwolf almost smushed his spider thing. Very generic uh, action movie line. Aquaman also is still not with the team. It's still only at four. Yeah. Wonder Woman's pretty awesome. I feel like we just have to acknowledge Are this. they going to come in one at a time? Like, Are they supposed to be surprise entrances? Shouldn't they all just come up now? <laughs> it is a little bit. They haven't even looked to see if there's more people up there. Hot take. We don't need to hear that music every time she fights people. No. I mean, that's how themes work, but not that into the idea. That okay. That was a weird line. Like we know that's not what he meant. Yeah, it was just and, a, like kind of a no, pride his, line. He, he, he was clearly going, "I want to kill her," and she was like, "I belong to no one." Which yeah, she thinks I he mean, wanted to marry her. I mean, I mean, Flash just said it. This is true. This is not together. But does Batman need to speak a Batman voice when he's fighting like alien monsters? You don't need to hide yourself. I believe that it's because he has the he has the the voice changer built into his cowl, um, so he always is going to sound like okay. that. See, we lingered on the bat gun, so we know he would grab it again, but then we missed all the action of him actually fighting the guy because we were just watching the gun. Also, what's the point of uh, wings if you can get kicked off a thing and then fall and die? Nightcrawlers in this from X-Men? I know. That's what I said when I was watching it earlier. <laughs> the original version. Because he did the same line. I'm like, wait, why is it called a Nightcrawler? Because it crawls in the night. Why is, yeah, he's so focused on her where there's lots of other things going on. He it's just weird. called her out. He's like, no, everybody else back out. I just really Wait, want that, her. This is cool. That's cool. That is very cool. I like that. Yeah, that's the one, like, smart use of the lightning. Yeah, that, that was, also that was actually, they, that was a really good In a way, that's kind of what they do in Hawk. That seems very inspired by Ang Lee's Hawk when they do the lightning fight and you see the shadows in the clouds. It was very the, the Hugely influential Ang Lee's Hulk. Um, should be 
Where's my comic panels? They need to put this in the comic panels. You want the Ang Lee cut? The Ang Lee cut of Justice League? Yeah, man. That'd be good. That'd be real good. I like this use of the power, too. This is seems more like the Quicksilver and X-Men kind of usage. Yes, but it's also better than that weird this, scene with Iris earlier where it's like slow-mo love song and then he like yeah. slowly catches her in a weird way. This is but more doesn't this also just look like the DC logo in the beginning? <laughs> the slow-mo oh, yeah. through the heroes? Yep. Like, it still looks a little like, cheap. I, I like the whole he runs down and he, he knocks the sword back into her hand. And then he's a dork and he trips over. And... That seems very flashy. I don't. His costume is weird, by the way. They all should be wearing a lot more armor. It all seems ill thought out. I mean, I guess if you're Wonder Woman, you're like a freaking god, so you're probably all right. Yeah. I like Alfred. He's like, catastrophic system failure. You're probably fine. <laughs> oh, you get the chant with her again. It's either the chair or the music. I don't understand what the chant is. That does not work nope. for me. It pumps Wonder Woman up. That's her pregame jam. She's fucking badass. He looking sad. In the middle of a fight. Yeah, but you like don't like him. Why would you spend a movie not liking him and then suddenly jump to his rescue? He also like he seems like an okay father. He just can't make it to his football games because he's like a very important scientist. <laughs> it do, it does feel like the classic like how dare the dad not show up for all the events when like I don't know he's yeah. working really. He's like. A lot worse situations. Seems like he's supporting you pretty well. This is one of my least favorite things in, in just movies in general. Is the like the trope of my dad didn't love me because he had a job. Yeah. Like my dad, my dad was not good because I don't know he was like cared about his job and was focused. That's what Theo's going to think. My dad doesn't love me because he has a podcast. <laughs> I mean, they're certainly giving Cyborg a lot more to do here. I think he had quite a bit to do with the original. I thought, I thought that was like a lot of people's takeaway. People like the Cyborg shit, and that's just because it was it's different, weird. I think. Because it's, it's honestly not I don't good. like it. I don't no, like it's it. Bad. I think people just want to like something that's which to New. me, he's like the worst member of the team, and I don't think it's really that close. I think even he though could I be don't, cool. I like his powers and I like the idea. Well, I he's one of those like characters that like I, the execution. I don't think is good. I think in theory, he could be a really cool character. The character yeah, I, I really don't like. Don't like it. Characterization. I still like his characterization as angsty teen sad boy. Yeah, it doesn't it's, feel that interesting. It's kind of paying off the edgelordy idea of what emotions look like that Zack Snyder can work with. All right, here we go. My boy's here. Saving the day. Is he the most powerful Justice League member? Probably. Him or Superman. No, stop. No. Wonder Woman is better than him. Don't give I think that. Aquaman's more powerful than Wonder Woman. Because of the this. fish speaking? It's because of the well, fish no, speaking. He, I think it's because he controls an entire form of matter. Most powerful Justice League members. In case anyone is wondering, Zach and I know super all the comics. What list are you going to find of someone ranking Justice League members? I'm doing it, man. This is going to be awesome. All right, we got ScreenRant.com. 
ranking them. Okay, <laughs> sure. Ready? I'm gonna go on. I'm not gonna read the whole list. I'm just gonna find out who's number one. Green Lantern's probably higher than Aquaman. He might be. Green Lantern's pretty powerful. Number one is Doctor Fate, who's not in this movie. Martian Never Manhunter, heard of him. number two. Yeah. Oh, I guess the Flash is number three. He like time the, travels. I don't know. Well, all the electricity is right. Wonder Woman is number four. You're correct. So I'm not right. Captain Adam at number five. Shazam at number six. Superman at number seven. What? How is Superman lower than Shazam and Wonder Woman? I don't know. Well, maybe because they don't have the massive weaknesses like Kryptonite. Um, Shazam eight. has a major weakness, which is he's a kid half of the time. Eight Zatanna, nine Green Lantern, <laughs> ten Power Girl, or right, eleven Aquaman. So Aquaman is not the most powerful. I'm wrong. They just don't consider the fish enough. Do you ever watch a movie and just really hope the credits are real long? <laughs> are you holding your like, 45 minutes credits? <laughs> when I see like an hour and 55 minutes, I'm like, oh, I hope 20 minutes of this is credits. <laughs> so this is literally the exact same thing Dark Side did at the beginning. It's time to snuggle a pillow. It's that time of night. That's really explosive. He's doing exactly the same thing Darkseid did. I don't know. It's an image he likes. I get it. Why is the pattern is the pattern consistent between people? I don't know. But I must say, Steppenwolf, real sexy collarbone. It's like really pronounced collarbone. I'm real into it. I gotta question anyone who likes lava that much. <laughs> oh, Zack Snyder definitely loves lava. He definitely like is trying to build his own lava pit in his backyard. I like how they're locking everybody up because of alien microbes. That's a weird extra, um, weird extra significance in 2021. Um, I mean, it's definitely alien microbes are locked up. I don't believe what the what what the man wants to tell you. It's, it's alien microbes. <laughs> Zach is gonna now <laughs> tell you all his beliefs about how. Fire viruses aren't real and they're all aliens. Corona, more like the Mercury. Mars flu. Rona. Mars Rona. The Mars Rona. <laughs> I don't know who this guy is. I would like to know why. Is this is he just like the messenger? I think he's just middle the middle man rock. He's the tough the middle man but he, between Steppenwolf and Darkseid. He's basically just the talking rock. It's like, just because they're villains, why can't they be sexy? They don't have to look like death. Like all these poor paraflyers, one of them. Oh, this, like, was, this was one of the fun parts. parts. Of Wonder Woman, David Thewlis is the bad guy. And like David Lewis is looking good in that movie. I'm gonna become I'm sure. a dumb rage monster. Hey, dude, he has a great mustache. Can we just talk about how great his mustache is? <laughs> That's a weird take where you're like David Thewlis should be snubbed for people's sexiest man. <laughs> hey, stop stop hating. David Thewlis is a nice man. You know these people really sexiest man. Steppenwolf in that deep ass collarbone. You can like. <laughs> lay I mean, it's better. In the collarbone. It's better than freaking. Oh, it's dark side. It's better than dark side. weird like hole in the middle of his chest. I don't like this rock version look though. You it's could sit like on that collarbone. <laughs> 
Is this like a weird way of communicating? Is he just the messenger turned into him? It's like their it's telecommunications a, instead of like a hologram. It's their like images. flu network or something from Harry Potter, but it's a rock. Wow, he sounds so desperate. They have the same voice. The same evil, deep voice. Yeah, they sort of sound the same. I would also like to bask in the glow of anti-life. <laughs> <laughs> Let's open new tanny booths instead of anti -life. The beds. It's anti-life tanning. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a robot. I don't think you need to wear a hoodie. I think it's because these people look at them weird. That is weird, but it's like speaks to technology. Like they're inanimate objects. Like you're speaking in a lamp. That's why people look at you weird. Yeah. They shouldn't say the word speaks. It's not what it is. I just like can manipulate yeah. it. You're not talking it. They don't have a language. Chill out. You can read its code or something. Then it makes it seem like they have feelings. That ship's sad. He told me it was sad. <laughs> I mean, Steppenwolf's kind of said he's real desperate for Darkseid to come to the planet. He just wants to hang out. I don't like that vest. It's a bad vest. I like hate this is what I hate about the Avengers too, but the like forced con oh, the conflictations between team members. Yeah, it just never always seems natural. It just seems like a way to artificially create yeah, conflict. Like why is Aquaman pissed at him? He just because the movie wants him to be pissed at him. Yeah, he doesn't know it's anything. Suspicious. So they found it in Nazis, of course. Is that his actual human body that they put on top? Just keeping it alive, okay. So the mother box went into him and like built him. Uh, so that is like kind of close to the like mind stone crane vision. The, the powers of this item creates life. Stop acting like this is a sh bad thing. You're a cool robot that can break into technology. Imagine if RoboCop spent the whole time just complaining about Harry as a robot rather than like, doing cool robot shit. I mean, it's not. Totally I don't is. think it's. I don't think it's bad to have a character be like, "I didn't choose to have this happen. That happened to me." But not Fred on it the whole time. 
becomes a bit of a well, buzzkill. I, mean, I mean, it comes down to like, is your goal of this movie to make a superhero movie where it's a team up and kind of awesome, or is it like to explore the intricacies of what happens to people when they're forced to become superheroes? Like, they've also all had shitty things happen to them. You're not alone because you look weird. They've all like lost family members. She lost her whole like country. Yeah. He's lost He's people. displaced from, from his whole community. He's like an orphan. Not an orphan, yeah. but like a lost from his society. He basically, like, yeah. It's... You know, everybody has their shit, cyborg. Think outside your own head. You can talk to computers, but you can't talk to other humans. So he's used some other boxes to bring back Superman? Yeah, that's what they did in the original. Yeah, that's kind of silly. It might have been easier just to I mean, never kill him. Well, it's a pretty famous storyline, the death of Superman. Yeah. I but like a late one, I think. I mean, I mean, this has been always Not been a problem, you isn't it? You probably shouldn't kill Superman in the second movie that you do. With Superman. Well, yeah, this has been the problem with Snyder's universe in the beginning is they made a superhero movie and they tried to make a like pseudo Justice League movie in the second movie and they tried to jump straight to Justice League. Like they just ru they went really fast and they never set they didn't set up the majority of their characters, which is why you don't necessarily have the connections from some of the characters that you'd like. Oh, we're back to the foreclosure sign that they lingered on two hours this, ago. This storyline <laughs> feels so tossed in random at random moments. Yes, and not they haven't checked on it in two hours. Her accent's really bad. I don't know what her accent is supposed to be. To be honest, it's supposed it's supposed to be like Kentucky or like Oklahoma, but it's over Kansas. The top. You mean? Okay, oh, it's Kansas. Yeah, but it's over the top. I don't know what a Kansas accent sounds like. It's what we like think is hillbilly, but it's actually the Midwest. But it's the same concept. Yeah. Like a cowboy accent, that's what it is. It sounds like a cowboy. Okay. If Clark Kent grew up in Kansas, mm -hmm. what's the odds that he stormed the Capitol? <laughs> Um, do you think super? Do you think Superman thinks that the vote was rigged? I don't think so. Okay. But he definitely went to high school with kids. Who did. Okay, yeah. I mean, his parents definitely do. Even though Superman's fine for good, the kids definitely like they're stuck in their ways. <laughs> I do honestly. I think a more political Superman would be interesting. I also think that like. You've, like updating Superman to today. Um, if you have an alien from another planet, that's way more interesting if that's not a white guy uh, mm. from Kansas. Like feeling like I mean, an outsider. That's the plan moving forward. Very excited. Stefan James, please. You know, like there's no world and stop Michael B. Jordan. I don't think it will be, honestly. Okay. Mostly because I think that I don't think they're going to cast uh, the Black Panther guy and the Creed guy as Superman. They don't tend to do famous people. They just cast The Rock. No, but The Rock doesn't have another character. Wait, what on earth is that? Is she stepping off? Is that Martian Man? What is Martian Man? Did Martian Manhunter lose his Kansas house? I don't know. Wait, the random army officer from BVS is Martian Manhunter now? 
They just gave a random. Yeah, they gave a random person Martian. Ma That's so. Okay, I guess. But also, Marsh Man Hunter was complaining about the loss of the house. Well, I think that was just visiting Lois and I think, but like. But did Marsh Man Hunter spy on Martha to know what was happening in her life? I don't know. I'm so confused. Oh my god! Ah, ha, ha. Sorry. What are you doing yourself? I just splashed my teeth. I'm trying to pour out of a thermos into my mug all over my leg. <laughs> it's so hot. <laughs> so Harry Lennox is now Martian Manager. Okay. I, I guess sort of My whole family. <laughs> I hope you did not wake up the young child because that'll be a nightmare. Uh, There's none of us without him. The plan next night, tomorrow night, after staying up all night watching Justice League, is I'm expected to, sh to shit all the king sources. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm expected to share the bed with this little monster tomorrow because we're not bringing our playpen, and so I'm definitely not getting sleep tomorrow night either. It doesn't never goes well. I like how they're just randomly grave digging. I remember this from the first one. From the yes, this is a scene in the original. Yeah. He's your he okay. He's super random. That's a basic ass thing to say. You come up with a bit more unique hero. Yeah. It's a bit interesting. I feel like it's one of those things where like you don't necessarily need to play up Superman's place in the universe. I feel like people kind of get Superman's place in the universe. You don't have to have every character be like, man, Superman's my hero. We can't be, we're nothing without him. Like, I, I feel like you're overplaying. Nah, he should be in someone, someone less popular. It's like saying Michael Jackson was his favorite musician. Basic. Yeah. Basic ass, come on something better. I mean, I feel like if you're like two superheroes, you probably should be able to dig that grave off a little quicker. Yeah, can you do a shovel fast? I feel like, again. I might just ruin my wife's desk with that teacup, too. Oops, this is a, an adventure happening with tea tonight. Wait, did they just talk about like. Oh my god. Are we, we still obsessed with the tea? Yeah, I have left like eight marks on my wife's desk of like two hot things. So honest question. Uh, it's not this it's not the Zach pours tea uh commentary. We're two and a half hours in I'm right now material, sorry. We're going to talk about tea. Then we're going to talk about the Girl Scout cookies they bought for 20 minutes. This is what I have on the itinerary. All right. What do we what What's your Girl Scout cookie of choice? I don't really eat Girl Scout cookies. Of course you don't. You're no fun. See, like, them digging up a grave should be so much funnier. Like, this should be a bit. Dude, it's like freaking Hamlet. Do the Hamlet bit. It's, yeah, it should be. It's weird. It's dark. It should be funny. I 
I, I do want to say with the, an hour and 30 left, we have one normal podcast length ahead of us. Yeah. I would like, I wouldn't. Okay. I like bits where they have to try on hats. That's good. I don't know yeah. why they had to put everybody in quarantine for so long. <laughs> it's like a That's horrible so goofy. joke. And that also That's makes so me goofy. Laugh. That's so goofy. He's always dressed by getting naked. This seeing Batman on the edge of something still makes me nervous. I'm just like, I don't trust it. You're gonna fall. You're gonna step the wrong way. The wind's gonna blow. You need to be more careful. Step, take a couple steps back. Why would they put him as the like? I mean, military worker. Put someone that I looks more like they might be a military. Honestly, like put Gal Gadot there <laughs> would be more believable than Ezra Miller. It's an interesting choice. I mean, he's a robot, so you can't put him up front. Aquaman doesn't really look like. I don't think he would pass military inspection. Yeah, so they're getting close to. Maybe don't seem so like surprised that you got through security. Yeah, yeah Gal Gadot would have been a lot cooler about it. I think bad's about to happen. I feel like with those two. This happens in the original. This basically, what happens in the original with the added stuff related to uh, Cyborg's dad. Yeah. I feel like you're always allowed to believe like Cyborg's dad would be a much more villainous character. Cause, and maybe just because we're used to. He said shut it down and they just left. <laughs> it's not shutting it down, it's running away. <laughs> yeah. And they just randomly get in this way. I guess. Oh, it's gonna be a reunion. Is he just gonna walk past him and snub him? He's so mad yeah. at why is, why is he still mad at his dad? Because he turned him into a robot? He like literally saved his life. Yeah, I don't necessarily understand his um They they saved each other's lives at some point. It also from what I understand, um, his injuries put him in the hospital, but didn't necessarily, like, I didn't, did it truly, like, cut him in half and lose an arm? Like, mm. I, I'm confused how much he actually was affected versus what he is now. I, thought, I think he was fully paralyzed. But I don't think they necessarily show that effectively to the point where you understand why no, his dad would be willing to take such an extreme step as building an entire, like, because... No. If you're his dad and you're telling us his dad is not a terrible person, his dad has to be – like his dad has to be – like he, it has to be such an extreme step for his dad to take. Like he has to literally – like the difference can be like, well, your son's going to be, you know, completely comatose. Like, you know, basically a vegetable for the rest of his life. And that's why okay. you're choosing to – All the design of this is very vaginal. 
Can you just take that in? This is just like a it, bunch of vaginas. You know, <laughs> that, is, that is a stupid observation. <laughs> so this is basically, if you go back to the original cut, this is basically an extended sequence of what they already did. I'm not sure we needed an extended version of it. Yeah. This is, feels like a. This feels like honestly something that's starting to coalesce as we watch this. Is that there's a lot of extended sequences in this movie that I'm not sure needed to be extended. Part of me feels like. No. Part of me feels like. A better, the best version of Justice League would be, Snyder's original vig vision, like heavily edited to a more normal movie length. Because like I'm gonna be honest. This is not a movie you're going to watch a lot of times because it, it there's definitely moments where it drags. It is storylines you don't care about. We keep going back to Lois and the mom, and it's like, why do we keep doing this? And the, well, Zack Snyder is always a director that thinks he's going to win Best Picture with his, you know, edge core movies. Well, I feel like. I think Snyder, adding sad I think. scenes. He thinks he has this unique space. Like, I'm going to make these big blockbuster movies, but they're going to be emotional and people are going to have feelings and it's going to be different. And Zack Snyder doesn't realize that he doesn't actually know what feelings look like. Well, I mean, it's also like, I'm sorry, there are clearly other blockbusters that sure. have emotions. Why is there a pregnancy test? Why is there a random pregnancy test? Do people always. She has Superman's baby. It's baby Superman. Honest question: Do people just have pregnancy tests? I feel like that's one of those things you buy um, in specific scenarios. Zack Snyder definitely thinks all women keep pregnancy tests at all times by them. <laughs> I do think I, I do. Think this is a little bit more solemn in this version. The other version seems a little rushed. Like it's fair to be a little bit more solemn in a moment where you're attempting to. You know, I did not get a word of what you said. Your sound went out again. Oh, my bad. I, I just like how a little this is a little bit more solid and a little bit more um, reflective. It's a little bit less I rushed. I don't like that. The song is reflective is the opposite. I think of what a team up superhero movie should be. No, but I, I I agree. But I think in this moment when you're choosing to attempt to bring Superman back, I think oh, not rushing moment. that is a good thing. Okay, I'm saying sure. this is good. This is good. I think this is a good. I think it's a good moment to, with which to. Take your time a little bit. There's plenty of other times where, like, I don't know why we just saw Lois walk, take a press pass out of a draw, and walk past a pregnancy test, but. <laughs> she's had Superman's baby, but she can't have it until he comes back. She, so she's just reserving it so when she can fuck Superman. I guess. None of those words were that hard to understand. No, he really wasn't. I guess he like is a sea human. <laughs> Batman's so decisive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do it. That's what I want. That's Fabian's true superpower is decisiveness. Oh, so this, is gonna be, this is gonna be a little weird though if like they bring Superman back the day she's like ready to move on. And then I feel like yeah. they will not uh grapple with that emotional choice by their female character. So she's ready to move on. And then the evil Superman's about to come out. It's got, this is a, that's a weird choice. Why would you play her as ready to move on right when you're going to bring the character back? That's just emotionally kind of manipulative. To make the relief feel greater? I don't know. I mean, I think if you bring Superman back and she's not ready to move on, then that is what she wants. But if you're choosing to move on and then you're like, the character's back. Isn't that just like weird?
Why, why do you have to count three times? It's not actually a count of three. That was a count of nine. Whoa. What? That's just the, the whole planet. Just count it up. <laughs> Dark side, super thoughtful, thinking man pose. Dead. Why is she burning? That's not she's real. Dead. Her. That's I think she's dead, or at least in this dream sequence. And Darkseid is coming after she died. But how is that related to them dropping the mother box? I'm. I don't this know. That's a very abrupt, very abrupt change. This is nonsensical. What does any of this have to do with Superman coming back? This feels like the classic Zack Snyder thinks more is better. And that's not always true. I think Steppenwolf is a lot more intimidating looking in Dark Side. His hips are too narrow. He also sort of looks like Lesser, lesser Thanos. So there's a dead is Green Lantern. Like the Justice League is broke. I don't understand what's going on here. This why Superman not comes back dark. I don't know. The whole Superman dark thing doesn't make any sense because also the character is dark for like four seconds and then it's fine. Hey, four seconds an hour is good back an hour here, so. In the original, they're like really, really important, the slow-mo. Because they're like, it's really important that you hit it right as it touches the liquid. Yeah. I feel like the problem with times is like they make every single action throughout a four hour movie feel like the make or break point. So yeah. it, devalu it devalues the individual moments because they seem too often. The. <laughs> I'm confused. Now we're going in reverse. The backup time because the water is going backwards. Maybe. But that was not clear that he did that. It just seemed to happen. Yeah. Just to save him a little bit of time. <laughs> Initial instinct, floating guy, I must pull out my gun and shoot it. Pretty accurate look at uh, our police force. I do think it's interesting that he somehow loses his shirt but not his pants <laughs> in his waking up process. I know. If you're going to make it rated R, show some peen. <laughs> or like I don't know, you could show his butt, and we don't have to see it. You could very no, nah, show it all. Show that Superman dick. <laughs> That's your new nickname, <laughs> Zach. Show that Superman dick for. He has some curly chest here, by the way. I don't like it. He's like the one, I feel like he's the one, like, very ripped dude in movies that actually has chest hair. Nah, but it's very puby chest hair. 
It's not good. Manscaped Cavill. Yeah, just trim it. Take some scissors. Freak, <laughs> even freaking Aquaman doesn't have chest hair. And he's like freaking crazy hairy. Oh, yeah, he chips. Wolverine has chest hair, right? Yeah, he has to. Yeah. I assume Hugh Jackman has hair and heavy into his body. Yeah. I don't think you would assume Henry Cavill was a hairy person. No, I don't think you would. I mean, he's not really that hairy in that picture, to be honest. No, it's very average. It's yeah, a lot it more than what I got. She said his name in such a weird way. Like she's trying to like speak it in his accent. I don't know. Yeah. That one was. It's very much like when non Hispanic people try to say sp Spanish words in Spanish accents. <laughs> The way she pronounces Kello. This fight basically also happens in the original. So this is not anything really that new. Honestly, it's kind of annoying that they're like, we have to bring him back as like kind of a bad guy for 30 seconds, but then he'll be fine eventually. Yeah. It just feels like a sort of useless conflict. I'm st okay, backtracking. Still very confused about that dream sequence. What did any oh, of that I, I, It made no it? sense. It made absolutely no sense. Okay. But this is like a trend throughout dead this Wonder Woman. He likes, he likes doing random dream sequences that don't really make a lot of sense in the plot wise. I think I think I was holding out hope that within the next 10 minutes it was going to make sense. Or connect? I, I don't. I'm not sure it will. I mean, there's a, if you go back to BVS, there's a random dream sequence where Batman runs into the villain Man Bat, and it's basically nonsensical and doesn't like really work. I mean, to be fair, if a dream sequence really going to use the word dream, it should be nonsensical. You should like fly at one point, don't fly at the other time. You end up not wearing pants halfway through it. Yeah, I mean, but I feel like in, you know, in there, this is a thing in comic book movies. There's the Scarlet Witch sends Captain um, 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 Iron Man into one in Age of Ultron, but that ends up paying off in uh, Endgame. Do you well, think Endgame, this movie? Would, do you think this would be better if they just let him have his stash and Superman just the cool stash? Well, it's they actually the scene that's really noticeable that, that that he does they had to CGI it out is not in this movie. It's that random like he's talking to kids and they're asking him questions at the beginning. It's like a cell phone camera thing. It's a really stupid scene that does not work. I'm just thinking if you want me to believe in evil Superman, he needs to have a mustache. It should twirl at the end. I like Batman just getting pep talks. You're good. Keep going. There is like a weird thing though in, in Snyder's movies where like heroes are allowed to act in really bad ways and then yeah. there are no consequences for it. Like it's Don't weird to me that that at one point Superman was like enemy number one because of some fake stuff. And in this, he attacks everyone and somehow the movie never like Terrible. deals with that as yeah, it's like Wait, so all those Senate committees that wanted to control Superman now don't care in a world where he literally like actually fought people and injured people and blew stuff up? Some pretty normal superhero stuff that the consequences of their actions are never really felt. 
Yeah, but I feel like some some universes are are like clearer about making it clear that they don't care about consequences, or they do care about consequences, or people talk about consequences but they don't happen. And then these movies seem to be somewhat inconsistent at times. Yeah. If you're wondering why I'm bored by this fight scene, it's because it's the exact same one since the original, and I don't think it's that interesting of a scene. Well, because Superman is never going to have that interesting of action scenes. Well, the only interesting Superman action scene is the one from BBS where he gets hit with kryptonite gas and, like, he's actually weak again. That's at least somewhat interesting. In this one, he's so ridiculously overpowered that, like, the rest of the Justice League combined have nothing for him. Do you think Batman would be a good basketball coach? <laughs> Maybe I'm doing some way back connection here. <laughs> I think Batman would be like get some great pep talks, have some great strategy. He'll be a good back. He should have like he would have took Gotham City's basketball team to the top. I can see this. Yeah. I can see this. He's obsessive, so you definitely know he's like watching tapes at night in the back cave. He, I bet he could do some great strength and kitchen programs. Hmm. I gotta say, for a movie that is twice as long as the original cut, I mean, granted, we have an hour and 14 left. Outside of Steppenwolf, there's really not that much different here. Love more Lois Lane, right? What? There's a lot more Lois Lane, right? There's not really, though. There's some more, but it's not significant. Steppenwolf's the only character I feel like significantly has more stuff. Maybe more Cyborg? And then after more flash because they, they had more flash beginning story. Fair. To be fair, it's not okay. I would say this: it's not necessarily a lot of outside of Steppenwolf. It's not a lot of added stuff that really significantly helps the movie. Like this movie, very much feels like it was made for people who are deeply invested in these characters to begin with. Which I feel like if you contrast it to Marvel's approach where it feels like you can anyone can watch a Marvel movie basically regardless of how much you know. And this is kind of, I don't know, I don't love this because it's like, oh, they fought Superman, so then he got the last mother box? Is that not the mother... Wait, who got the mother box? Uh, Steppenwolf did? Just by distracting. Oh, he got it. He got it. He got it in the parking lot originally, and now it's not. It's not in the parking lot anymore. But I'm assuming he's just going to go in and get it relatively too easily. Yeah. That was groovy. I like Rage, Seven Wolf. <laughs> He was walking. The, why did he walk the other direction? He like walked west to jump east. I gotta be honest. I bet his love life isn't that good. Also, no, no, awkward... his love... I don't think he oh. like cares that much. But once he gets it, I've talked already way too long about his collarbone. That guy gets it. I think you're underrated collarbones. Dude, I'm not underrating the collarbone. I'm just saying he's got spikes in awkward places. I'm assuming, though, he's, like, gay with people who also have spikes in awkward places. <laughs> this is part of his culture. But you know someone's looking at, like, I want to know what's under that porcupine okay. loincloth. This is an improvement because this in the original version, he basically just gets the last mother box in – in the parking lot. See, if, if he watched his father kill himself, like he's doing now, the drama would be so much more effective. But now it's all going to seem repetitive because he's still going to be as sad as he ever was, even though his situation got so much more extreme. Yeah. Like he has reason to grieve now. That should have just been a beginning. It would have made it more believable. They could run with it. You don't need the... Cats in the cradle bullshit. Wait, what does his dad do then? 
He's dead. Or he's in the mother box? He, was he try, I thought he was trying to destroy the mother box, but maybe not. So begins the end. One hour and ten minutes away from the movie. <laughs> I mean, technically, that's 25%. That's the end. We're into chapter six soon, right? I think so, yeah. What did this could have been released his... six episodes. Why was this not six episodes? I'm confused. What did his dad... Why did his dad do that? What was the goal of that? I don't know. I thought he was trying to destroy the mother box and maybe failed. But he killed himself? Or was he trying to do it? Was he trying to make himself a cyborg? We don't really have Superman. Do you have such a big fan do you remember Aquaman's lines? <laughs> no. So that's a bat on his chest, right? But it's like this most rectangular version of a bat picture. Yes, it's a, it's a pretty goofy looking bat. Like it does not look like, like any that, bat. Yeah, is that enough of a head? It's a really bad drawing. Now I believe that Bruce Wayne did do his own fashion design because it's shitty. Mm. It's like the head's too wide. So his dad marks the box for the thermal marker so they could track it. Okay. Is that worth sacrificing your life? That seems like a long stretch to like even be effective. I feel like that was a – yeah. I, to, part of me feels like he built a giant bubble around his oh, place. Shit. I feel like you could see We're this from – getting something darker, darker than what we've seen before. You don't even know how dark this could get. You thought shit was gray. <laughs> It's about to be some dark gray. <laughs> is there is there much just a part of the movie? Twenty minutes of the movie is just a black screen. <laughs> if you're gonna see nothing, turn up that brightness, baby. <laughs> she is rubbing those abs. That's a really specific placement of her hand. Really was. Honestly, his abs not that great. No, his best part of his body is his backbone. What do back you is, know is, that muscle? What is that muscle? What do you mean? Like oh, right underneath his, your shoulder. His traps. You mean? Okay, sure. It's, it's the like the lower, yeah, rounder part underneath his shoulder. Yes, you can right hit a really nice. Uh, uh, what do they call it? There's a specific bodybuilding thing where you, you flex it and blow it out. Um, yeah, you can hit a really nice one of those. I don't know. Henry Cavill, not a great actor. No, but, no, I, 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 but I could see the 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 advantages of having him on screen, especially shirtless. He's, the thing is, I think, I think he's, is a that, top, he's a know. top tier bod in Hollywood right now. For Probably. Top tier male bod, yeah. Between this and um, Fallout. Who else, is, who else is on that list? Probably Manganiello. He's pretty good. Oh, Hemsworth. Hemsworth is kind of the elite, though. Oh, yeah. That's... Hemsworth is scary. Hemsworth is, like, legitimately probably could bodybuild if he wanted to. Like, genetically, just he's very he, – he's he has some he has some gifts. Yeah. I think he's just sneakier with Cavill because you, like, don't see it from his face, and he has – that kind of just like straight edge demeanor. Well, he, he has he has like he's obviously in good really good shape and he's obviously really built. He doesn't have the vascularity of Hemsworth. Hemsworth has like crazy veins going on.
Okay, that's another bad vest. This movie's all about bad vests. Well, stop hating on the vest. I like the vest. You definitely would like a vest. I'm not a vest guy, but not a bad. Vest. I think you will be in 20 years. Well, when we're in year, you know, 21 of the Lucas and Zach podcast. Yeah. I have, like, low expectations that the world exists in, but if we're going. <laughs> well, I mean, if you if we count, if we know our, we'll start taping year 21 and you're, like, 12, so we'll be, like, six or eight years ahead. I feel like this would not have been hard to find even without the weird mother box thing. Without his dad marking it with his soul, or however he did it. Well, he, he superheated it, so you could see the thermal signature. Okay. But I think you could have identified that from the giant cloud. I don't know if you have any satellite imaging. I think at some point you could just give up. Just say like we had a good run, and that's a good life. Civilization was great as why it lasted. Let's just give it over to Dark Side. It's fine. It's not worth the battle. <laughs> They're also like pretty shitty as a culture, so maybe Dark Side will do something good with it. I think sometimes we just fight a little too hard to save humanity. <laughs> Zach's like the super passive superhero. <laughs> Wait, Doom boxes are different than Mother boxes. Is everything a box? I th I think he's just calling them Doom boxes because. Okay. <laughs> That's a real Batman line. It really is. <laughs> Don't know how many demons and how many hells. That's definitely a line that they would have mocked in a Lego Batman movie. <laughs> yeah. This, it's like, the bird sounds are so artificial. They're all doing too much. I don't like it. I want some real birds, x I Put some real birds in that set. Is this what makes him good? The corn. touch on the abs and corn and rubbing corn stalks. <laughs> That's real America. When you can touch corn, it's real America. You can't tell me. You watch him fucking... Softly petting corn socks and think that guy did not start the capital. <laughs> so, this is such a weird bit for you to keep going back to. This is called You and I have been watching over three hours. <laughs> uh, I really don't like him as Superman, and I really don't like her as Lois. Like, Amy like Adams is very. Amy Adams is very talented, and this is not her best work. I'm into him as Superman um, if he had a different director guided in the way. Well, to be fair, I think physically he looks the part. I think the problem is that they're just very tonally inconsistent about how much of a hero Superman is or should be and, like, how much destruction and pain is, like, something he does or doesn't want to do. I think, like, in Man from Uncle, he also, you know, shows some more layers to what he can do and show more charm and if they can bring that into the Superman role. Like, well, how, yeah. like... Superman like, should be charming and heroic. Like they they changed Thor to fake Crimson Thor's skills. They saw what he could do in other movies comedically, and they adjust the future movies to go he's with that. Way, he should, he's way better. He should have, yeah, and yeah. so they should have adjusted what they do with the Superman character with what they shown where Henry Cavill kind of thrived in between either Fallout or Man from Uncle. Which are very different characters. They're a little more no. like cunning, and, but no, it's they're different characters. But you make a point that, um, I mean, I don't know. You play your actor's strengths when you cast them, and his strength is not brooding, and or just like I don't know, I don't know if it's even play your actor's strengths. Like, give the character something to do. Like, 
his entire role through movies seems to be like he gets told to be a hero and then doesn't really act like a hero. And then he just like they just take a bunch of shots where he like looks good without a shirt on or looks good in a costume and like they don't really give much to beyond it. Hey, the man loves a good corn stalk though. I'm confused. Corn, right? Right? It's too short. Yeah, that's corn. How is she? No, it's, it's young corn. It's not fully okay, corn. Yeah, young corn. <laughs> Why is the mom here? I'm just confused. Yeah, she's, she's she it's but it's it might be Martian Manhunter. Who knows? Yeah, I think it would. They might all be those... Martian Manhunter. Now we never know. It's like once you introduce the scrolls, who's real? Are they going to just do the Martian Manhunter thing where he shows up for four seconds and they're like, hey, comics nerds, look, you like that. And then they just like he just doesn't show up for the rest of the movie. I think that's it. And he's like not actually part of the universe moving forward. Well, I mean, honestly, mo- the thing is, if you look at it, most of these people aren't part of the universe going forward. There's still plans to have a Flash movie. Yeah, they that they've been talking about directors for that movie for like I I feel like four years at this point. Aquaman and Wonder Woman clearly going to be part of the universe. Um, Cyborg, no, or very unlikely. Affleck probably no, and Cavill probably no. Yeah, who knows what they're doing with Superman? Well, this is one of those things where like people have been talking about this movie. Like, what does this movie say for the universe? And I'm like, I think it says almost nothing because it's like a redo yeah. of a movie from 2017. And how like, do you connect them back together when you're casting a new younger Batman? And well, not even this that is like you did these Snyder movies that are darker and more serious, and then you left the Snyder movies and you did kind of goofy fun Aquaman and Shazam and Birds of Prey and Wonder Woman 1984, which are just totally not on they're not playing in the same universe. Is is the secretly most consistent DC universe character Harley Quinn? What do you mean consistent? Just story wise, I really can't stand her in, in Suicide. I really hate Suicide Squad. Oh, it's horrible. It's awful. It's real bad. I rewatched that the other day. That movie is like genuinely terrible. It has like a shade to DVD quality to it. For having movie stars. Well, it's like it's shot. It's kind of interesting because it simultaneously. The movie doesn't make sense, and the character's understanding of their own choices doesn't make sense. It's... Flight is its nature. These these make Cyborg so important. Like he is the what this plot revolves around. The whole solution. Yeah, it's just a mistake. That's not what people want to see. It's an interesting choice because I feel like he's not that popular of a character. Yeah. All the like flying tech and everything is so bulky. Everything's so big and wide and square and gray. I will admit that the one of the big problems with the athletic like, tech in this movie and also a continuation of the Nolan tech is that it's real bulky and tank like. And the planes yeah. all look like, like I want a sleek plane. I don't want like a, a bulky like troop carrier plane. Like you could you could yeah. make it. Fat. You have you have six people in your plane. You're not flying a plane with eighty people in it. This is lame. They're just magic squares connecting. <laughs> I'm. Yep. This is not exciting. I'm going to be right back. Zach, it's time for Batman songs. Batman, he is a guy. He is a bat that's also a guy. Batman, he fights in the night. A scary little guy. He is the one. That's all I got. I was really hoping that I was going to come up with something great this spot. Sometimes I trust my improv skills a little more. Uh, this didn't work well. And I apologize to the whole community, especially apologize to Lucas. Um, he had a lot of faith and trust in me. And leave me on the pod. Um, I promised 12 songs, and now I, I, I've turned out to be a liar. We'll talk about this. 
Uh, this is a rotating cube that they all have been staring at for 30 seconds. Um, like Cyborg, very interested in this rotating cube. Um, this isn't changing. Why do they got to stare at it? It seems like at this point they know, know what this picture is. What color, what shape would you like your cube to be in? Do you have a preferred shape? Um, like a, that's a, a horrible question. And can you please think, <laughs> how do we word this? What shape would you like your cube in? What Did shape you would you like your mother box in? Thank you. What okay. would you like your mother I object in? Mother object. Um, I would like it to be uh, trapezoid. Trapezoid's underrated. It definitely would not want to be in this Kryptonian vagina shaped. <laughs> <laughs> well, it really I is. It goes it's with so, like you said a it. And obsession. <laughs> I've never, I never thought about it, and then you said it. And I'm like, that's literally like ten vaginas behind him in the background. I think it. Like, this is this, very weird. The, like the the very kind of maternal obsession of Zack Snyder that he kind of has. The whole Martha I thing. He, I don't think he really realized how. He made this so. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, not maternal, but like coming out of the womb. It's very womby. It is a little bit, right? It, it, that's definitely what Zack Snyder will think is a safe place. Is right up, right up the bat, China. <laughs> the almost, almost, you just had to say the whole word. Those, those good. So he goes and gets his costume. Hey, it's Russell Crowe. A.K.A. the best part of... And a cost. I will say, Kevin Costner's voice sounds a little silly next to Russell Crowe. Really, we're doing black. We're doing black cape Superman. Isn't that like the bad guy? Just like Sully, how many birds do you think Superman has killed? Probably a lot. Probably a lot of birds. Pretty harmful to the environment. Oh, great! We are under an hour. I'm so happy. All right, we're finally getting the team together. Okay, this is like what you want to see in a team up movie: is people getting ready to fight as a team. Yeah. I do like that the Flash's costume looked real beat up. Like he went through some shit. Like there's a lot of scratches. You swear I tear. I like the like the the uh, like how it looks like it's a, a bunch of pieces put together. Like it's not necessarily yeah. super cohesive because he just kind of had to do it himself. That kind of makes it look like a, a hockey uniform, though. <laughs> I will say stick to the plan is kind of always horrible advice. Like you got to have some sort of flexibility. Something goes wrong. You can't just always stick to the plan. Yeah. I mean, I think his plan was like, just do really basic stuff, like stop them. So it might work in this game. Okay. That's like, that's stick to the goal. This is a good. This is not, this is not a super detail oriented plan. <laughs> Again, I really, I really do hate how the way they they use the lighting. Aquaman's costume looks real freaking boring. That everything does. Everything looks sick and boring. Yeah, um, but like Aquaman's costume, you know, especially. You know what doesn't look. What doesn't look sick and boring is the bat flying goggles. I mean, Batman works best when you make any of his accessories as silly as possible, and the fact that he has to wear flying goggles super funny. Yeah. Batman really affects There's so much just like appearing and disappearing light things. Like the dog going say, by, there's so much just moving light. <laughs> one thing they did in this movie that really does, I'm glad they did, is they got rid of that stupid storyline with the random family who lives near this place. 
Do you remember this? From the I original don't version? This. No, there's like a random family. They that. they just keep coming back to them as it gets worse and worse. And I'm like, why are we trying to human? Why are we trying to personalize this problem? I think uh, I think Steppenwolf was like a big enough problem. We didn't need to worry about the individual consequences of Steppenwolf and his crazy monsters. In the original version, it just goes down and he jumps into the Batcopter. Yeah. But now we can see him navigate the whole ship. Yeah, don't worry about him. Stick to the plan. Yeah. I'm confused whether I'm just standing there. Um, yeah. For Wonder Woman's outfit, there's just like that one armband that may or may not be connected to the rest of the suit that I never fully understood. Just to show off like her shoulder, I guess. But there's just one little layer of metal. Oh, that's pretty sweet. That was a good shot. What do you think the superhero socks are like? They had that nice socks, right? Yeah, I mean, I feel like you're just using athletic socks, to be honest. Uh, yeah. Get some of that sweat, like the, the, the things that reduce sweat and stuff, because you don't want to like sweat a lot. Yeah. Yeah, another like bulky tank like thing. Ooh, got guns going on. Yeah, where did they even get those from? They just like flew a new air was. Slow mo. And why have they not been using guns the whole time? Why did they just decide that would be helpful? <laughs> well, they use the small guns for the handhelds. They just haven't used the big okay, ones yet. Yeah. I have to, two things that annoys me is one, when you make it really dark, it makes it harder to understand what's happening in a fight. Unless you do overhead shots. Um, yeah. Like that was just kind of falling stuff and flying stuff and bullets. That Do you think that was the whole thing you wanted to keep in to get the R rating? Was the impaling yeah, there's the there's that one, and there's a couple of like the some of the Atlanteans get like ripped in half. Yeah, no. I mean, that was gory too. I guess there's a little more violence. Yeah, there's some fun stuff that goes on. Okay, this is actually kind of cool. I liked, I liked, I, I mean, it's fun when you watch um, superhero teams fight in unison. That's always a good look. Uh, that's like the classic image from the first trailer for the old Justice League. Is it doesn't really happen this effectively in that ver in that version. Yeah. I feel like in the original one, it has the more of his, his like dudish personality. Yeah, he has. Um, it kind of comes off some some lines that are not necessarily the most interesting. I feel like that jump even came off that way. It was just like his kind of like broy show off. Oh, there's the mind man. There's, there's the line. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the guy is like hanging out in Iceland. How? Who's saying my man? Is all like. I don't know. Warm, comfy, sweater, worn town. Okay, I'm about to pour some tea. Um, let's, All right, be let's careful. Hope, let's hope the best. I only got a little bit left. I'm going to oh, do wow. this away from my leg. That was pretty cool. This is actually okay. I, I appreciate that they're. It, it's making clear how they're making this assault on um, the tower. So that's actually kind of a good extension of this. 
story is just like it's making it clear how batman is part of this and how like how everyone is a part of the attack like that's i think that's a good component of this because in the original one it's a little like the the lay, the layout is a little bit um unclear and that makes the fights less interesting if you don't really understand how people go from running around in the village to like actually attacking yeah this is pretty cool i like this did you say bleed lava? Like it came out and just like molted on the I rock? think so. Oh, their blood is weird. It's pretty cool fight scenes though. And um, Cyborg still is definitely much dark as hell though. Yeah, I mean, it still has the same Snyder problems. This is at least an actual good use of extra, um, like extra footage, extra time in the movie. I think Sire just thinks putting these like red and orange lights through the darkness. That's why he makes everything dark so his lights stick out more. He thinks that's exciting. But yeah, it just some... artificial. Why is Zack Snyder not made a dragon movie? Like, imagine if he just had a dragon flying through a dark sky and shooting out fire bolts everywhere. Yeah. It seems like something you should do. We don't have enough dragon movies these days. I would actually... Ooh, we don't really have, have any dragon movies. Yeah. If there's any kind of Zack Snyder movie, I want, I want a Zack Snyder dragon movie. I'm in. I sold myself. Honestly, after watching this in BBS, I would watch the Zack Snyder Batman movie with Affleck. No, I would not. <laughs> I, I don't need that. I, I just think he, that's a character he seems interested in, and as his aesthetic would fit better than... Like people like Aquaman, Superman, and the Flash. Yeah. I hope this is better because in the original, the final fight is pretty lame and pretty forgettable. Yeah. All right, that's pretty sweet. I don't, I don't understand what it is. Is it like is water he, energy? But he yeah, not, I'm confused. He, of doesn't, what. he doesn't create water with his Triton, right? It just manipulates it really does, water. But it no really water. does feel like someone was like, you know, that Thor movie is cool. Let's have him stab his Triton into the ground and do the same thing. Man, I feel like villains love the word puny. <laughs> it's how you really make people feel down to you. Yeah. I don't understand how anything hurts. He's like literally made of metal spikes. Yeah. It is a a unique Where move to try to... Where spots? Like, if you're going to hit him, got to hit him in his like rotten ass face. Just stab him in the nose. Do you think a Flash movie is going to get old because they had to use that effect way too much? Yes. I also think that Ezra Miller's Flash could get um, irritating if he's the only character in the movie. Yeah. It feels like the character you built is very much a supporting character. Yeah. I mean, there's other superhero characters that also get really great and annoying that should be by themselves, uh, like Deadpool. <laughs> People seem to love it.
this is a lot better of a fight and fight scene. I feel like you also, with this version, you have a better understanding of what they need to do to fix this problem. In the original cut, it was very much just like, they need to do something, but it was never super clear what it was. But I think that's why I kind of like it, because it was like, embrace the nonsense of it all, like, it doesn't matter, we're just going to be a silly movie and make it more fun. But when you try to make sense of it, I think you realize... The nonsense of it. You realize how ridiculous it is. Rather I mean, than acting like it doesn't matter. I'd rather just pretend it doesn't matter because it doesn't matter. But this acts like it's really important and really serious and we need to care. Does Superman freeze but not, like, I think the other one embraces more like the... What we actually care about is just like superheroes doing superhero things and being silly. So it's not act like we're anything more than that. Yeah, the other one's definitely be- sillier, but I, I do think that if you're going to be Snyder and you're going to make a movie where you want to care about this stuff, this is a better job explaining why you should care and what they have to do. It's the same thing with Steppenwolf and like explaining why and what they have to do to find the mother boxes. There's just a. You can, I think you can there's a middle them. ground. I think you can. I think you can care about it and it be interesting, but not act like it's the most important thing in the world and the stakes are so high. I think he just takes the notch up too high. Oh no, I I, I would agree that he definitely over he never overdoes it with some things. I think he also is good at times at giving you the information you need. I feel like there's definitely moments in this film versus the original where I was able to understand the stakes or what had to happen in the scenario even scenario that just didn't I guess exist I understand. The other way. I just don't care. Is my point now? That's fair. No, I mean it's completely fair. We get it. You're the Sire Cut's biggest fan. You love everything that's going on. Just chopped his head off. Thing off. Yeah, it's kind of cool. I like it. You got, you got to spend on one horn at a time, like a video game. So he got hit. Some pretty bad acting. <laughs> wow. This is new. This did not happen. He's not this injured in the original. My flash dies in the cider cut. Where it should be. Are they gonna really bring Dark Side? That feels like a bad I mean, idea to introduce the guy with thirty seven minutes to go. That yeah, that means we got twenty more minutes of battle. Dark Side's been the whole movie. No, he has been, but he's not here. Yeah. That's like if they had Thanos show up at the end of Avengers rather than it be like hinted at him being a part of it. Uh, this is definitely different than the original because Super- Superman just shows up and he fixes it. <laughs> the vibrating powers of Flash. Pretty funny to watch. <laughs> so are they going to have to, like, multiverse this to run to fix it? He's doing he have to, like, run back in time? Like, what is... Yeah. He so is. he's going to run back in time to, to save it. 
which I guess is an interesting like twist. I, I think it's probably more interesting than what they did in the original, which is just like, oh, Superman showed up. This is over. Although it's kind of goofy. Key... Like, what do you say? <laughs> Is the key to his running speed on his arm motion? I feel like he's doing a lot of ridiculous waviness of the arms. Yeah, I'm going to tell you, as somebody who does run, for it, uh, he's doing full the, rotations of his hand in front of his face. That's not how you run. That's very inefficient and uh, not very comfortable. <laughs> I imagine that's how Ezra Miller actually runs. He, he does not strike me as somebody. Who necessarily runs that much? Nah, an athletic dorky. type, I would say. He looks pretty dorky. Yeah. <laughs> Look at those arms. <laughs> They're full side rotations. <laughs> I'm choking again. I'm laughing too hard. And his body's at like almost a 45 degree angle. Yeah, it's a little interesting. This is pretty cool, though, that he's running so fast. That is actually a cool use of the Flash powers and a way and a cool way to fix. This is actually good because I would rather have Barry Allen run back in time and fix it than have Darkseid show up and have to fight him with 20 minutes left in the movie. But if you can run back in time, then you can fix anything and everything. Well, this is the so whole Harry, – this is the Harry power. Potter um, time turner problem. Where everyone's like, okay, so if they can go back in time and save Buckbeak and Sirius. Why didn't he run back? Why didn't he go back in time and save his parents? Yeah, these tight rules. Not really. This is cool. I like this. This is actually pretty cool. Is everyone getting their time to shine and change the whole outcome now? Now it's Cyborg's time. I don't know. This is not I, one of these weird I, things where they send Cyborg into his mind, and I don't like them. No, it's bad. It's a. It, I mean, the images are really ugly. I don't know why his inside computer world is always an apocalyptic society. Him in a letter jacket, and then his jacket. Yeah. Okay, he's not their kid. He's a foot taller than both of them. That does happen occasionally. Okay. Uh, I just don't really care that much about Cyborg, to be honest. I don't find him very interesting. Yes, because um, he's like a teenager, and we are old and don't have the ability to sympathize with teenage angst that i'm not, not broken true. kind of angst is that true, i though? know i don't give yes because i think he's doing too much for me I, it's true i don't know if it's truly just the teenage thing i think there's also just part of it is i i, I think they keep putting him in weird positions like all this weird mind stuff is just i don't think helps you like his character or be interested in his character no Where did he grow other their arms from? Oh, it's his like wiring. Yeah. Well, isn't uh, like his I think part of his problem with his powers is like he can just be anything. That's mean. He looks like a moron. <laughs> He's definitely gonna get made fun of. They hadn't come back just oh! to get stabbed that quickly. Oh, that's good. Get the chance! Wonder Woman appeared. I feel like it's making a big deal every time she comes on screen. Cut his head off. Oh, okay, that's his week. All right, that's pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. That's pretty dope ending. So wait, is Wonder Woman allowed to kill people? I don't know the rules. People get upset about this stuff. No, I don't think we're going to have a problem with women killing people. Especially a bad guy. Well, we have problems with Superman killing bad guys. Yeah, but like Superman is a, a special case it, where he's supposed to be like this totally good hero. He also just helped them kill them. Like, he had a big part of that. 
He had the assist. He passed to the murder. I mean, the weirdest thing about this movie is you have so much dark side, a character that I don't think is showing up anytime soon. Is that who was the messenger then, who is appearing as the statue? I think so. Yeah, you gotta bathe in it. Bathe in the ant life. We use the old ways? What does that mean? Who's this random person here? That's what I would like to know. That's that's granny good the woman's granny goodness. Okay, that's good. Uh, congratulations on knowing something I had no idea who that person was. Um Oh my gosh, what was the comic I read? That was a little more, I'm blanking his name. Tom, it's a Tom King DC comic he did recently. Tom King has done a lot of interesting stuff. He did the interesting like vision run. Um, he's mm -hmm. been doing um, Batman for a while. Um, why am I completely blanking the name of this? But he did one, or is it Mr. Miracles? Is that the name of it? Am I making this up? That sounds right. Okay, but he did a Mr. Miracle um, series, like 10 book run. That great goodness, and that's why I know she is. My boy. Yeah. Isn't the black superhero Superman costume supposed to be like the bad guy? Yes. But I guess it's just his after death. I mean, maybe not, yes, I don't know. It also, like, can we He's not He's still do that wearing the look, glasses. He's like, it looks really. Like, course, it looks really. Up. Black Superman costume and looks really stupid when he's standing to Batman because they're basically like wearing the same color. Yeah, you can't say the black Superman costume looks dumb and Batman has sunglasses on top of his head. Like, no, no, no. he's just stood down the sun for a second. I mean, I'm just saying it looks dumb because they're basically wearing the same color. They're all wearing the same color. It's all Snyder gray. Like, you can really go is, to Sherwin-Williams and you can pick out the color Snyder gray to paint your house. <laughs> it is kind of crazy, though, if you think about it. Because, like, Aquaman's costume is crazy. <laughs> it's crazy colorful in... Um, this epilogue's about to be okay. 20 minutes. It's not an epilogue. <laughs> it, it, it is legitimately 20 minutes. Now he bought the tape recorder back to life so you he can hear his father's voice again. I hope he feels a lot of guilt about how he felt about his father a little unfairly for this whole movie. <laughs> he should feel bad. That's like, yeah, like a company just, should say, I'm proud of you, but also you owe everything to me. I brought you into this world. If you're his dad, you're like, dude, I didn't do this to hurt you. I like didn't want to lose you and your mom at the same time. Yeah. Like his dad didn't do it as like a, a bad thing. He was like, no, I didn't want to like let my entire family die in one day. Man, that that's a real default look. I think that's a, that's that's the look right there. Although, again, weird that he's, like, ditching them because he just goes back and up. Yeah. I want to be a fisherman in Iceland, too. Sounds like a great life. Pretty stressless. You get a lot of clouds. No fun. You, you get to play music. You get to play music in the local bar. Yeah, you can swim all the way back to the island no matter where you are. <laughs> Even if you look like you have no ability to swim at all. <laughs> <laughs> You're constantly drinking in an alcohol. All trucks look a hundred years old. <laughs> I 
Wait, are we supposed to care about his development right now? I would he assume he, expo- he was just exposition I, the whole movie. I would assume he would play a part in a Flash movie. Yeah. But, yeah. Maybe he's... Vi- Star Labs, I feel like, is always the cause of shit. They're always, like, the villains, in a way. Well, typically, right. they're the people who cause Barry Allen to be created and then also serve as, like, a team or collaboration, yeah. but also might serve as a villain. Did they just shoot the scene with, like, completely different costumes? Do you, you know, think... The same dialogue? Is, is Diana, like... Go to all these like fashion runway shows as like a Vogue subscriber. Like her style is really on point, so she has to like stay in the loop. Clearly, so this I is feel basically- like you, there is a world that twenty years ago that like could have could have played the Flash. Yeah. This is definitely, this is like very similar to the original version. But it's like the extended version. Did he buy the house back? This is the real development of the that yeah, no, wait. Out, out of the house. He bought the bank. You know, you could also just get a new house. It would have been okay. <laughs> he has some a skinny waist for a robot. Yeah, it is a weird like v-shaped thing shape of it yeah you can fly now that's cool okay there's jk simmons for the second minute in the movie it is very weird they're like we really need commissioner gordon in this movie and then we don't use him like at all. Just don't have him Oh, it's like all these supporting characters you don't need from the other places did you need willem dafoe and amber heard why not no, you needed you needed her, because she's involved in the mother box scene. What is with this? This scene just looks weird. She's gonna send a message back with the arrow. They might be all dead. She doesn't know. That has to be what one of the Wonder Woman's had to be. That's like a pretty fair story. It's like, does it still exist or not? Well, the problem of is her trying to return back to the mascara. I don't think the mascara is completely destroyed in the original version, the way it is in this version, and the Whedon version is what they went off of in the second Wonder Woman movie. But the second Wonder Woman takes place before. Oh, true. You're right. You're right. But like, let's be real. For they're not necessarily going to treat Snyder versus Canon for everything. I do think the her trying to return to Thea Scare though is an interesting story to do. Uh, is this yeah, where we're get the fuck Joker? Is this our Joker scene? No, this is going to be Lex. In the original, it's Lex, and okay. then it, Lex gets out, and then they have a meetup with Slade Wilson. Because he's bald now. Yeah, he got shaved at the end of BBS. Because as you all know, in every movie, if a prisoner just stands there randomly, it's always a good sign. It just means he can't hear you. He's joking around. Oh, no, I just think that in every movie ever, if you are forced to go into a prison cell with a dangerous prisoner by himself... Let me play the Luther music. If 
Because oh, we have no tree. Troubled. That's such a weird term. That's a cut. It's like, like the cut. Because he escaped. Yeah. And then this is also part of the original, the ending, which is a re weird introduction to Slade Wilson, aka Deathstroke, which is a character who seemingly has no part in any of these movies. No, you thought this was going to be the Batman villain moving forward, but. Yeah, there's he he's not. I don't think he's even. I, I think he might have been if they were doing a. Back surprised he hasn't showed up in the Suicide Squad or something. He doesn't even. It's not even the second Suicide Squad. He's not in the Batman. Unless they're completely changing something, he's not literally a character that doesn't matter. I mean, even him as Luthor has been barely used. I think they were just booking him for later. Well, I think what they did is they they put him in BVS and people hated him. Yeah. And I think that's why he got sidelined so much. This is a bad look though. Oh, it's a it's a really goofy look. Like Manu Wilson did it on Arrow. It was much more interesting. Do you watch Arrow? I did in the beginning, yeah. I stopped it like after the fifth season. I watched most of the CW shows for a little bit. Even that patch has like three just, different patterns to it. it it's just, just weird. It's like, that. why didn't you do the traditional patch? Like, why couldn't you just do the patch that everybody else does? Like, why do you have to do some bizarre, like, yeah. unique patch? I don't understand why you had to make that weird. Well, this is dark. Yeah, of course. Now, okay. Oh, we need the closure of these story. So now you're on like some other planet, seemingly. Or wait, this is the same dream sequence as we saw, like Batman in earlier. Or Batman from BBS also. Seems... No, this. Yeah, this is that's, that's this is a continue. This is a continuation of the Batman dream sequence from Batman v Superman. Mm, but th is this real? This looks very video gamey. It's is not real shot? in the. It's not real in that. Is it just showing that they're still like fighting together? Yes. Mira randomly? And Deathstroke? This is all like a whole movie happened in between where we just watched this. This is like Justice League 5 or something. Did Aquaman die? <laughs> I mean, I would assume so, because he's not here, and you've got randomly got Mira and Deathstroke on your team. Here's just a random guy. Oh, this is freaking Jokers on the team now. Yeah. I hate Jenner to let us look her, just so we're clear. That character's awful. It's basically the same character he plays in um, the, the little things. It really is. I don't know.
This is all nonsense. This means nothing. We have no context to understand this. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't care. It's like we're reading the like we're reading the last chapter of a book that we haven't read. It, it feels like he wants to do some. This feels like he has this weird conniption where he always has to do some kind of bizarre dream sequence in the future thing. But it's like, why are you acting like you're gonna get to make like six of these movies on the first one? It's just very. Even if this was a hint, it's like too in detail for like a hint at what's gonna come. It's like a full chapter. You can't hit with a full part of the story. Well, you can hint with that. You just you can't you can't expect your audience to understand what this is if you don't explain it. Yeah. That was the most like Heath Ledger, Jack Nicholson kind of Joker voice that he would do. Bigger man. Yeah. So now there's a Robin too. Well, there's a in BBS. There's indications that Robin's been killed. There's other fuck that was very important for the R rain. Well, Harley Quinn is also dead. So you really just destroyed the whole universe by saying all these people are dead. Yeah, it doesn't really give you a great path to go forward with because you basically just told us, man, life's going to suck. You're going to get this team of the Justice League you don't really want to deal with. That doesn't sound fun. You're just saying that, hey, look forward to the future. Like 10 years later, everything is really just the apocalypse and sucks. Also, and shitty. real weird Nothing choice. Matters from a, real weird choice from a guy whose universe has moved on without him. <laughs> Can you please just kill him? I don't like. You have Deathstroke back here, do nothing but stare. His patch is better. Like, basic. All right, here's some interesting settings. Oh, it's going to be. Oh, Superman's evil. That's cool. What's happening? I'm pretty sure that Superman found him. He's the bad guy in this verse. Of course he is. Oh my god. That was all waste of my time. <laughs> another dumbass dream sequence. Stop doing this, Snyder. They don't work. <laughs> For nothing. Honestly, he's just paranoid about Superman's if powers. Somebody could, if somebody could take Snyder's movies and edit all the dream sequence out of them, I would be would like to watch that version. I, these dream sequences are so stupid. They're not deep. They're not complex. They're not interesting. It doesn't mean anything. It's, it doesn't tell you something about the character. It's just telling you he's paranoid about the future, I guess. Bruce Wayne's just having a dream about something. It's like, what? A hundred years in the future or something? I don't know. I don't like this house. Like I don't trust any house that's all windows. What are you trying yeah. to show? Martian Manhunter's here. That's groovy. Why did he not help if he cares? 
this is a great question. The anti life equation is accurate. Oh, thank you. After the fight's over. <laughs> There's so many characters that have red eyes. Really well. I feel like they want to kiss. Like that was a pause. They want to kiss. Really? What does that mean? Like he kills men? <laughs> I think it means he was from Mars. The rest of but it, he's not hunting sure men. Bruce is like, can people just not know who I am? Can I go back to being a rich person? Okay. Uh, Autumn Snyder, of course, the daughter that yeah. um, Drino tragically took her own life, which caused his initial exit. You know, so fitting. You know. All right. Let's see. I want to see if this movie has anything. Yeah, that's, we can fast forward. I don't need to watch 15 minutes of credits. I just want to see if anything. Jump forward a little I bit. Feel just like, I feel like we just saw five. Uh, yeah, I don't think they're giving us. And... Okay. And that is four hours and two minutes and 12 seconds of Justice League. The <laughs> Zack Snyder I do feel like I accomplished something. Um. Let's let's you know. We get, let's talk about the movie. Uh, we're not gonna do. Nope. Are we gonna? We're not gonna. Are we doing a review of this or no? We're just gonna talk about it. Now. We're gonna do like three minutes and then go to bed. <laughs> okay, no, that's fair. I just like I was wanting to know if you wanted to do like a separate review of the movie. But let's just talk about it now. Um, I think it's an improvement on the original cut. I think it it fleshes out some stuff. Steppenwolf probably in particular. Uh, the final fight scene is much better. But it still has all the flaws of Zack Snyder. I mean, the problem is that it's four hours long. It's definitely way too long. Zack, how much of uh, how much of this movie could you would you, could you cut? Um, you can cut exactly two hours to make the movie you had before. It it really again it does sort of feel like the ultimate edition of BBS, where it's like you made the movie longer, but you could have just cut different things and released that movie, and it would have been better. I think even if you cut it, it the, the material here is just not strong enough that it's not going to be good. The, the the filming of it, the style of it, the look of it, nothing strong enough to make it a quality movie, no matter what you cut it to. Yeah, I think I think if I'm honest, my, my grade for this would be like two and a half out of five versus the original cut being a two out of five. Like, I don't think I, it necessarily... Like, there's too, way, way too much slow motion... They try to hammer these emotional beats that don't really connect because I don't think you're connected to the characters. Um, it's stupid. Like the gray, I don't understand why somebody can't tell him that gray is not a good color scheme for your movie. Um, and there's just like, there's 19 supporting characters that don't need to be in this movie. I mean, so even to with four to, hours, they don't give them enough time to have any purpose. Right. But like, this is com to compare this to another large team of movie. If you go look at the Avengers movies, outside of Endgame, they don't really try to have more than the core team. There's a couple other characters, but they don't try to tie every single character. Like, why is Iris West in this movie? Like, the Flash is dad is only in this movie because you're trying to connect the Flash to his original story. Yeah. Like, there's so many characters in this movie who are just kind of there. 
it's it wants to be so much the centerpiece of the universe that establishes everything to move forward. So they introduce all these characters so that they can give the stepping stone for how to evolve. Because I think Zack Snyder had a lot of, lot of self importance in his place in this universe. He, he and that's self importance that seems like overly judgmental of what I want to say, but I think he really wanted he had big to, plans. He had big, he had big plans. Pl he had big plans. And he wanted he wanted to be the one setting setting this the map forward for where it should go. Uh, Which is weird yeah. now in context because we're in 2021, and since this movie they've done Aquaman, Whoa. Birds of Prey, you know, Wonder Woman, and Shazam. His intention was to say what this is what he wanted to do. So it's going back to if it was back. I think he was in the mindset of 2017 of what he wanted to do, how he wanted to step forward the universe, and because uh, this truly is his you know blank check of how he wanted to move forward. So he's like, I'm gonna. Create yeah. the whole image of what I think this DC universe should be. Um, so it just kind of wants to do too much as far as world creation, which even four hours and everything else it wants to do is probably not enough. Yeah. Um, it, it does. I mean, I, obviously he's working as a, like what he would have done in the place. I do think that as a director, I feel like you have to be, I wish there was a little bit more mindful. He was a little more mindful of the fact that this movie is sort of like a spin off special cut on the streaming service that this universe isn't continuing from this point. Like, I wish there, like, I don't, like, I feel like you could have wrapped this movie up. Like, if you're, if you're Zach, I feel like you should be self-aware enough to realize that Ju Zach Snyder's Justice League 2 is not coming, or is very likely to be coming, unlikely to be coming. So, I like, think why are possible well, I, that he actually thinks there is a way for him to change it that if this does well that it can go back to what his goals are and that he can become a major player in the universe but i think that's i think that's a ridiculous mindset to be in because of the fact that you made a four-hour movie for a streaming like i mean i've had this discussion with other people this movie only exists because of a failure in 2017 to do what he what his vision was like this movie is not what happens in 2017. If this is 2017, they take this four-hour cut of Snyder's and they cut an hour and a half of it, which yeah. probably makes a better movie, to be honest. You can't, yeah. just, you can't release a four-hour movie in theaters. Like, that's not... <laughs> I saw somebody... I saw like, one of the craziest statements I saw today was like, if this, if they release this in theaters, non-COVID times, this movie would challenge Avengers Endgame for box office. I'm like, that's insane. That's an insane take. A four-hour Zack Snyder movie is never going to make two point seven billion dollars around the world. It's never going to happen. Also, there's no attachment to most of these characters and these stories. That MCU took twenty-three movies to get to what Endgame yeah. was, and to, and to earn that those that emotional heft of it, this forces the emotions onto you. To make and you really scary, and you don't. You really feel it in this movie too, because like characters like the Flash and Cyborg and Aquaman, you have basically no connection to before this film. Batman, no, you have a little bit of connection. So fast. I mean, a, it just, and you shoot Cyborg and say, look at him, be sad about him. It's just forcing you to have feelings yeah. attached to this character. Wonder Woman is the only character I feel like you really come into this movie. I mean, at least I came into this movie connected to at this point in the universe. They don't do much with her in this movie. They just, she's really just there for the action sequences and the fun. She hasn't carried it, any of that dramatically. It, it, it is a little bit of a weird choice to put Cyborg front and center in your giant Justice League movie. That's a That's weird choice. Am I right? Am I... Like you basically, weird. Superman does not show up till the last hour, and you focus on Cyborg, who is arguably the least famous character and the character we care least about. Are there yeah, really people who are going to this movie like big Cyborg fans? It's just a carrying, weird choice. He's carrying the emotional conflict of this movie. He really is. And um, it doesn't work. Um, I think I'm actually even a lot lower than you are because I also just the self seriousness of it really just rubs me the wrong way of how important this all just seems like it is. It's not it's not what I want for my superhero movies, and I, yeah. I do like the other one better because I think it got rid of that self seriousness. It's nonsense. It makes no sense, but I this can is at least definitely forgive it and have fun with it. And this I just can't like it wants to be judged in a different manner, so I'm judging it in a different manner yeah. than I would the original one, and it just doesn't work. Because it thinks it's the greatest movie of all time, so you're going to be harsher on it, and so that makes yeah, I do think this is one thing that that people are always like, why is Snyder judged so harshly in his movies? And it's like because Snyder thinks he's making, you know, Lawrence of Arabia with every superhero movie, and Guardians of the Galaxy Two is just trying to make a movie that makes you laugh. Like there's there's different levels to to the way these movies are. Like even uh, you know here I'll compare it to something else in the DC universe. Birds of Prey is not trying to be the greatest movie of all time. 
It knows it's silly and ridiculous. I don't like the movie very much, but I can like I'm not going to sit there and judge judge Birds of Prey super harshly because Birds of Prey is not asking for that. Like this movie yeah. is, and I think honestly, this movie. Feels I feel like, like me liking Birds of Prey gives away that you know what my take on this is going to be because that's just yeah the realm that I I am attracted. Well, to I think to. also me saying that my favorite DCU movie is Aquaman also sort of gives away what I like in these movies. Aquaman yeah, is way sillier and more uh, colorful and more like upbeat and ridiculous at times. Like, I mean, this movie is one of these things. Like, I feel like most people's opinions to this, like, there were two camps of people coming to this movie. There were people who are ridiculously hardcore Snyder fans who are probably going to like this regardless. Because at the end of the day, this is a four hour Zack Snyder movie. So if you love Zack Snyder's aesthetic and the way he does stuff, you're going to love this movie. Like, absolutely, you're going to love this movie. If you don't love Zack Snyder's aesthetic, I don't really think you're going to love this movie. Like, yeah. maybe you'll give it a three out of, you'll give it a six out of ten. Yeah, like, if you I, think Man of Steel is top tier, you know, DC movie or superhero movie, then you're, you'll continue to love this. Yeah, and if you love BBS, you're going to love, like, I, I just, I don't see this, I don't think this movie is going to change anyone's minds about Justice League. No. Like the first, like at least, I mean, I guess, I guess the, you know, the big improvement is Steppenwolf. I'll give him credit for that. You give it a better villain, you give it a better final battle. That's big, basically the two big improvements. And then that's not. moments that look good. Most of it I think is ugly, but as we said, there's some usages. I think some settings that his style does fit well. I think Theme Mascara looks good. I really wish that they would, I really wish he would allow color in his movies. I, I think his movies would be so much more impressive with color. I don't. I don't understand what his goal is because if you look at movies that you think are beautiful and impressive, they all have color. Yeah. Like all these movies that are really impressive and gorgeous, I've never seen one that there that's like gray. Gray is not a color that is particularly impressive or people find appealing. It's gray um, with orange flashes. He cares a lot about the orange flashes. True. It helps him stick out. He thinks there's a, a dynamic to it that doesn't exist. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is that's. Zack Snyder's Justice League. Um, yeah. I guess it was cool he got to make his cut. Um, yeah, good for him. I have nothing like bad about about him. It's just not a style that works for me. I feel like I'm trying to no. avoid. I feel like I might have said things that were a little rough, and I don't want to be mean to him. I have no harsh feelings. I don't know the guy. It's not my style. I, just, I hope people like it. I'm glad for people who love it. I'm gonna go yeah, watch Birds. Yeah. Again the third time. It's it's. I mean, I think we I think we've said it several times about this thing. This is this is a Zack Snyder movie for Zack Snyder hardcore fans. If you're yeah. in that group, you know what? Go to it. Um, yeah, just enjoy your movie. Um, but at the same time, I would say to the same people who love this, as a hardcore Zack Snyder fan, you just also need to acknowledge that this guy's style is not for a lot of people, and that fighting with everyone who doesn't like this movie is not in your best interest. Just enjoy what you love. Most people are probably not going to like this movie because it is so unabashedly Snyder and that style tends not to appeal to the majority of people. Yeah. It's just kind of is what it is. And you know what? You can like something that other people don't. And I think that kind of just this is a good moment to remember that and just be kind of like accepting of the fact that you like something, love it the way you love it. Um, but yeah, it's 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 it's, it's going to it's not going to be a, a popular thing, I think, overall. And I, I just do want to add that ending. Honestly, I was like close to, to a two and a half, and I was like, I can't. That ending was nonsense, and that's really where the self-importance, kind of the pretentiousness of him, kind of came off. That he thinks yeah. he's making this revelatory future-setting kind of movie, and it, it was a change sequence, and it means absolutely you wasted ten minutes of your time. You're confused the whole time you're in there. You have no idea what's happening, and then it doesn't even actually yeah. play into the plot. Yeah. I I would like to see what would happen if Snyder got put with a really strict editor. Someone who would not take, who didn't revere him and would kind of just call him on his shit and say, dude, this is a nonsensical dream sequence. Can we cut it? Dude, why are we throwing to Slade Wilson a character that is basically non-existent in the universe going forward? Dude, why are we having a random Martian manhunter goes and sees Lois? Scene? Like, There's so many scenes in here that like, yeah. they're cool Easter eggs for a hardcore comics fan. But they do nothing for your narrative overall. There's not enough context. I really do think I do think that if Zack Snyder took this four-hour cut and cut it to two and a half hours, 
and cut the right stuff out of it. So all the dream sequences, reduce the slow-mo, you know, like a lot of the other stuff. I do think that movies actually might be pretty good. Pretty good. But it's, I think that, I, I think that actually, that's my final thought there. This four hour cut has a very, has a good to very good two, two and a half hour cut inside it. The problem is it is overly stuffed with stuff that we don't need. I think there's a fine two and a half hour cut because it's still going to have Zack Snyder style all of it. <laughs> Yeah, but I think you could enjoy a shorter cut of this in the same manner as you'd enjoy a 300. Like, I'm not saying it's brilliant. I'm not saying it's the greatest movie ever, but I think that if you cut um, out some of the self-indulgence and the slow-mo and, like, the dream sequences, you could have an, you could enjoy that cut as a superhero movie. Here's the issue why I can't enjoy it like I enjoyed 300, because I can't go back to being 16 again. That's fair. That's valid. That's I've, not, I've not revisited 300 since I was 16, and we're going to let it live. I haven't either much. since I was, like... 18 or 19 or something. I haven't visited it either. It's a perfect movie for a 16 year old, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's the Snyder Cup. We did it. Any final thoughts? Or are we good? We survived. Um, we'll we'll see you for our next commentary when we do the Temp Story Cut of Tom and Jerry. <laughs> um, yeah. Enjoy. Uh, I hope you enjoyed our Oscar coverage. I hope you enjoyed these. I hope you enjoy. We got Wolf Walkers coming on Saturday, Small Axe next Saturday. And then the Saturday after that, we've got uh, the best of 2020. I'm very impressed that you're keeping up with the calendar because I have no idea. I have a spreadsheet in front of me, Zach Ford. That's <laughs> why I can do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Thank you for coming along with us in this journey. Um, we kind of did this because it would be, if that would be interesting. And it, I think it was interesting as an experience. I hope the people yes. who watch this find that our commentary adds to their enjoyment or at least helps them um, figure out what they think about this film. But we mainly did this to call people on the bluff. They called yeah. us on our bluff. <laughs> I also think that um, for me, I wanted to honestly watch this movie and have to pay attention for four hours and talk about it so that I could come to an, to an opinion. Because I think it's going to be an interesting piece of pop culture that gets debated, and I wanted to have my thoughts on it out there. Um. Because I think there's value in having people from all ends of the spectrum on this movie. Because I don't think I don't think you should be forced into a world where the majority of people talking about the Snyder Cut are ridiculous hardcore fans. Because I don't think that necessarily represents your entire audience. And I hope that we, as just kind of two average fans of average people watching the DCU, like we're not, you know, we're not the comic nerds. Slightly, slightly above average, just because of movie people, but. Yeah, we know we we know movies. We're not necessarily the hugest DC like fans. We, the comics guys. We can kind of keep track of what happens. We can talk about Infinity Stones. We can talk about Infinity Stones. That's true. Um, yeah, <laughs> I hope this was I hope this was interesting. Um, yeah, we're done. We'll see you next week, guys. Bye bye.